In the temporal region, you have the superficial temporal artery that's coming up, and it gives off a branch over here called the frontal ramus. That's the one that you can feel your pulse in your temple. And when it comes across, it's going to avoid the supraorbital, and it actually likes to join up to the supratrochlear. But that's a highway to go right this way into the eye, and there have been four reported cases of blindness here in the U.S. Two were temporary, two have some permanent loss, because they hit that vessel. Let's understand what's happening in this area over here, which we call the temporal fossa. In the temporal fossa, there's one muscle that lives there, and that muscle is the temporalis muscle, which is not a muscle of facial expression, but it's a muscle of mastication. Because it's a muscle of mastication or chewing, it has to generate a lot of force. It's not a gliding muscle like a muscle of facial expression, a mimetic muscle. It's a muscle that has to be anchored to pull up on the coronoid process of the mandible. Because it has to be anchored, it is stuck down to bone. It is so stuck down to bone up high over here in the fossa that the galea, which is the deep fascia of the forehead, can't get under it. So what does it do? It goes over the top of it, and it becomes a misnomer. It's called the deep temporal fascia, but it's lying on the surface of the temporalis muscle. That's weird. There is no fascia under the muscle in this area. It collects fascia down here at the bottom when it becomes a fibrotendinous insertion into, into the coronoid process. But up over here, there's no fascia. So when you're injecting down on bone over here, you're not under the muscle, you're not under fascia, you're in the muscle. You can't get under the muscle. The same way I explained to you, you can't get under the muscle over here. So that temporal oddity, we're going to use to our advantage. The vessel of the area, the, the frontal ramus, is sitting on top of that deep temporal fascia. There are some deep temporal vessels over there called the anterior and posterior deep temporal vessels and middle temporal vessel. They're branches of the internal maxillary. They're not going to cause blindness. They're going to cause a palate problem if you happen to catch them. They're inside the substance of the muscle. And because they're originating from here, by the time they get up to the top of the fossa, they are super thin and small. You cannot get inside them with a needle. So if you pick a spot that's one centimeter up, as Kent was showing you, one centimeter up the temporal fusion line, you feel for the temporal fusion line, you go one centimeter up, you come one centimeter back following the orbital rim, this is your sweet spot. With that injection, you go right down onto bone. You put your finger over it to make sure there's no pulse because you would prefer not to skewer the artery if you could avoid it, but I've done it. There's a bunch of veins over there. You try to see if you can avoid it. Most of the time when you're demoing and you're up here, you can't see a thing as far as vein goes. Don't worry about that, whoever I'm injecting. But <laughs> you can put the patient's head forward and have them congest, and then you can mark it if you want, and then sit them back up. But I try to see if there's anything that looks decent. And people of color, it's very hard to tell if there's any veins over there. But I know that I'm not going to be inside anything. I'm going to be behind it, and I might skewer it. And I fire my needle vertically down onto bone. Whenever I go down to bone, I choose a vertical path because it's the shortest distance, less chance of hitting something. If you're coming across tangential like this, there's much more things that you can hit. I go vertically down over here. I must feel the bone. I don't drive it into the patient's skull. You can't, but I, I must feel the bone. And I slowly start the product to flow, which is a product that has enough G prime that it wants to stand up. The, the muscle fibers here are so thin at the top that the product comes through the muscle fibers and then hits its head on the ceiling, which is the deep temporal fascia overlying it. I showed you that picture of the dissection. And it starts to spread between the fascia and the muscle, like I showed you on that blue dyed cadaver. I keep my finger over here because the product can really run all the way back, because so I keep my finger over here. We'll do this this afternoon. I inject slowly, and you'll see the product flow here and stop because it's fused. You'll see the product flow down to the orbital rim and stop because it's fused. And then the only place it can go, because I'm not allowing it to go here, you'll see it push against my finger, I won't let it, is it will come down this way right into the hollow of where I want it. I will not stick a needle under the skin over here. This is very dangerous. In the deep hollow over here is what you can see. Here she has her little veins and stuff. But in the deep hollow over here are the branches of that internal maxillary artery. You'll get into trouble.
If you want to go here superficially, like Steve Fagan has shown, you can go with a cannula. But even now, I spoke to him. He said, Arthur, I'm changing to your technique because my patients are all bloated and I'm using too much product and they have to massage it and I'm a little nervous about bruising them and everything. But with your technique, I just have to do a single puncture and I do this and I'm telling you that it works like the nuts. And we'll try to do that. One up, one over. It can't get any simpler than that for a temple. And you keep your finger here and you hold the pressure. If after you remove the needle, typical volume would be 0.3 to 0.4. If after you remove, a blended, 1 to 3. If after you remove the needle, you see that there's still a defect over here. There's still too much. You have one of two choices. Go in here with a cannula or go back into that area, keep on injecting, and wait for the product to flow down there. It will. But do not stick a needle under above the zygomatic arch here. There is a, a nerve that's coming up over here, which is the frontal branch of the facial nerve but it arborizes, it branches out by the time it gets here and the chances of you hitting it are small. I've never seen it happen, but theoretically, if you put the needle in there and you see her eyebrow flicker, it means you might have hit the nerve, you take out your needle and you find another place. Do not press on the plunger unless you feel bone. In fact, I don't push that hard, but every time I do a temple injection with the needle, I change my needle to do the other side because my needle is now dull because I've pushed it against the bone. That is temple, simple, one up, one over. On bone, on bone, on bone, deep, deep, deep. We're going to put a big D over here for deep, deep, deep. Careful when you're going under the skin over here. Make sure if you're an advanced injector that you stay away from the exits of the arteries or go with a cannula because you might blind the patient. Over here, you're going to hurt them, so don't go over here. Just push the product over. That's as simple as it is for the upper third of the face. Deep, 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 deep. Stay away from here for pain. Watch out for here for blindness. One up, one over. Keep your finger and inject.